chapter three. So remember, Raphael is still the narrator and he's just running away from the train station after he convinced the police that he didn't find the wallet. Chapter three. It was raining and cool. I just kept running steadily. I had no idea where I was and I didn't care. I felt like I could run forever. I ran through streets, heading for any lights that I saw. I had no money at all and I didn't care. The world felt so big, the rain was so fresh, and I remember thinking, why is it raining in the dry season? How can it be so cool? The sky was so high. Time had slowed right down, but it can't have been more than three hours. And as I ran, I realized more and more how stuck the police were, if I was the only clue they had. Again, it was clear how important the things we'd found must be, the wallet. And then I began to think how lucky I was and how close to death I had been. The hand could have opened and dropped me. I could have been thrown away. I could be, now, right now, slowly dying on a stone floor, if the policeman had dropped him out the window. I closed my eyes and ran faster with my arms stretched out. My auntie had said, Raphael found something, and that was the only clue they had. Just those words had led the whole neighborhood being searched, and me being taken. Taken, but free now. At last I slowed to a walk and at the far end of the street I saw a landmark I knew. I didn't know its name but I knew I was in the city business district. The landmark was the statue of a soldier raised up high. He had a drawn sword ready for some charge in some war. I had passed him before yelling something to his comrades fighting for freedom. I walked right up to him and looked up and I said, they let me go. I did not give up. Hmm, an inference I can make is that he's feeling pretty proud. I could not believe they had let me go, and the statue just carried on yelling. There was a surge of rain and the kind of breeze I'd felt on the dump site, in from the sea. A typhoon breeze, though this was not the typhoon season. I looked at the soldier and thought, so, am I garbage? And then I laughed because it occurred to me, then and there, that the garbage boy had just lied his way out from under the noises, noses of those clever men. A little garbage boy had sat there shaking, saying, I don't have the bag, when all the time I knew exactly where it was and what had been in it. We'd caught the train and we'd found the locker. We had the letter and, okay, we didn't know what it meant yet, but the garbage boys were way, the garbage boys were way ahead of the garbage police and I had said nothing to those men. I walked on. It would take two or three hours to reach Bahala, and I was so happy walking, I knew which direction to take. I passed an old man, two little kids with a cart. They were night sweepers, shoveling trash. I asked the man if he had a cigarette, and he looked at me strangely. I had forgotten that my face was covered in blood. He gave me a little bit of a cigarette, and I sat and smoked with him. The kids stood and looked at me, and I was stinking, but nobody seemed to care much. The little girl was about five and the other, maybe a girl, maybe a boy, looked about seven. The seven-year-old got a bottle of water out of the cart and splashed some on my nose and mouth. Then I said goodbye and started running again. Let me tell you something else. I think I will tell it now. On that computer, we had found out about Jose, the man whose bag it was. Oh, we're going to find out what they learned on the computer of Father Juilliard. Jose Angelico... God rest his poor soul, was a dead man. His name has been in the news. Gardo had said, what if he's a killer? But it turned out the poor man had been killed. Guess where he had died? He had died in a police station. The newspaper said that he had died while police were interrogating him. In the same police station as me? I wondered. In the same room? Had they dropped him from the window on purpose? By mistake? I was passing a little park and I ducked into it for a moment and I sat on the grass. The rain was so light and cool. I guess I was in deep shock. So I just sat for a while and I thought more about poor Jose Angelico, the person whose wallet he found. He had been arrested on suspicion of a major, major crime. It had made all the papers. After the computer, we had gone to the papers. One thing there's a lot of on the dump site is old newspapers. It didn't take us long to find the right ones, and we sat there like three little old men, me reading it all out to Rat, who nodded and stared. The police had arrested Jose Angelico for a robbery. Six million dollars. 
We sat back and tried to imagine what even a thousand dollars looked like. Gardo tried to translate it into pesos and got a headache so bad he had to lie down. We were laughing, trying to imagine how you walk with all those million dollars in your pocket, and then we stopped laughing. Jose Angelico had died in a police station, they said, and that's why I stuck to the lie, even as they held me out of that window, for the sake of Jose Angelico and his serious-faced little girl. I also think Jose was with me, because I know the dead come back. The crime he was accused of was robbing a government man, the vice president of six million dollars, and maybe he'd done it and the money was waiting somewhere. He must have put that bag in the trash before they... Got him. I think perhaps they made him confess to it, and that's when they came looking. One newspaper told us a little bit about him. It said that he had been an orphan, but that he had been adopted by a man called Dante Jerome Alondres, son of Gabriel Alondres. That was the name on the letter we'd found. Gabriel Alondres, the man in Colva prison. Jose Angelica, it said, had worked as a houseboy for the vice president for 18 years. So he was cleaning the house of the vice president. It said that Jose Angelico had an eight-year-old daughter and no other family. That's why he was writing to Gabriel Alondres. I sat shaking in the rain, and I knew for sure that we would have to go to Colva Prison and deliver the letter.